Ladies and gentlemen, Universal Studios Florida is pleased to present the Horror Makeup Show. And now, how about a nice round of applause for the host of today's show, Alex Ross. Hey there, everybody. Ross, welcome to the Horror Makeup Show. Today we've got a great guest, my good friend Mark James, all the way in from LA. He's a creature creator and a makeup artist, and today's gonna to share with you some of the latest trends in the horror industry. So please help me up on the stage, my good friend Mark James. Uh, a little louder, it gets quiet back there. Mark James, ladies and gentlemen, come on, lose your minds. Mark, we have James, everybody, yeah? Wait, I'm not dead. I'm not dead, I need help. Lady, help me. Lady, help me. I need mouth to mouth. Oh, wow. You're not gonna help me? Cold-hearted tourist. All right, I'm gonna die. It's on your head, enjoy. Yeah. Let's hear from Mark James, everybody. Hey! Hi, hey, Mark. How you doing? Good to see you, man. How you doing, everyone? Good. Well, three of you are doing great. Excellent. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm Mark. Like I said, I'm a creature creator and a makeup effects artist. It's my job to gross you off, freak you off, and scare the poo poo out of you. And now, some of you might not know this, but Universal is the studio that invented the monster movie. Yeah, we're all some clips. Universal's legacy of horror. I did watch this earlier backstage, not necessarily for the faint of heart. So if you do get scared easily, just close your eyes. But please, let your kids watch. Yeah. <laughs> show you some of the same basic techniques that we use to bring those clips to life. I brought along a couple of surprises, and if you behave, I'll show you what's over there behind the curtain. That's behind the curtain. That's the kid show thing. You brought it. I did. The children. Oh, He's been talking about this for months. I'm so excited to actually. No, wait, look. hang on, hang on. Don't look. What? Don't look. Why can't I look? Well, I want to say at the end of the I show. Just want to say, big finale surprise. What? I want it to be a big finale surprise. You know, pew pew pew. Pew pew pew. Pew pew pew. So don't peek. I don't want you to spoil it. Shh. Okay. I want you to be surprised with the people. All right, don't okay. be surprised. All right, here. This will take your mind off. Yes. Go out here. Yes. Find me someone whose family doesn't need anymore. I'll call them a volunteer. How about that? I like your words. Okay. Let's see here. No, don't raise your hands. Don't point. We found that people who do that at shows like this are usually crazy. I look for somebody who wandered in here. I thought it was Harry Potter or Transformers. Someone who's been drinking since like 10 a.m. And I think I found that person. And the crowd is going to go wild for... This lady right here, let's hear for everybody! Thanks for volunteering. Yeah, I got the camera right here, we need a before look picture. The police are very pesky about that. Right here on the trap door. Just a little forward. Perfect. Hi, I'm Alex and you are? Tina. Tina, Tina. Tina. nice to meet you, Tina. This is Mark over Hi, here. Tina, nice to meet you. Tina! Who's Tina! Tina! Hi, Tina, nice to meet you. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Let me see, let me see. Nice work, good stuff. Tina, where are you from? I'm from Columbia. Columbia. Tina from Columbia, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get a, let's get a photo. Get a photo. Right, where are you sitting? Let's right get a photo. Right, right. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Tina, who's that guy? It's your boyfriend. How long have you been dating? 
Three months? That's oh, okay. Still has that new curse smell. Good for you. All right. <laughs> Put your hands out here like that, please. After three months, it's time for an upgrade, okay? We're going to build you a new boyfriend. So you got options, okay? Got some body parts here for you. You get to put your new boyfriend together all by yourself, just like Ikea. He's got five hands. He's already more fun than your boyfriend. He's only got one foot, though. That means you're going to only take him to the IHOP. Don't judge me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bring him over here. Put him up on the counter there. I'm going to get his butt out of the fridge. Oh, how exciting. Right up there, Tina. Thank you so much. But there, do you have parts over there? Yeah, up here is fine. I'm so sorry. Ah! Yeah! Yeah! No! Damn, it's one of you that day, Tina. Tina. I am so sorry about that, Tina. I can't believe you're going to do that. I can't fix it, Tina. She's so what is wrong with you? We have to clean that up. Cut it. It is so unprofessional. Awful. Tina, you're my, you're my assistant. You're going to help me out, okay? All right. Roll up your left sleeve for me, okay? okay? All right, everybody. I'm sure while you're watching a horror movie, you've got to ask yourselves where do they get those severed limbs from? Let me show you. Come here. What? Give me another arm. No, I need this. I want to cut it I off. I can't host like Come this. Come on, you'll be good. Find somebody you. else. Tina. <laughs> Tina. I'm not going to use that. That's too big, okay? Use that. You look a lot like Aubrey Plaza. Has anyone ever told you that? Do you know who Aubrey Plaza is? Okay, you do. You gotta cut your arm off, okay? She said okay. She oh, said okay. Really so when I wanna cut your arm off, I want you to scream like you're in a horror movie, okay? Let's try practice scream on three, all right? One, two, three. Wow! Oh my goodness! Tina! Boy, that's a lucky guy. Yeah. yeah. On three. One, two, three. Wait! Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, what's wrong? There are, I just, there are some kids in the audience. You want me to cut a kid? What? Hey! Oh. What's, no, talk to them. Oh, yeah. Tina, relax. Kids! All the blades you see us using today, they've either been dulled or they're made out of plastic or rubber. Or they're dull and plastic like the Kardashians. No. It's funny because it's true. I want to emphasize to the people, so these guys are professionals with lots of training, so don't try this at home. Try it at a friend's house. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? Don't do that. All right, can we get a close-up, please? Here, Tina, you can hold that. Tina, up. say goodbye to your arm. One, two, three, scream! scream! Chihuahua. Okay, she's All right, strong. Everybody? Ta-da! Yeah, very nice. All right, as you can clearly see, there's a cutout here in the blade, okay? The cutout was in the handle. See that? Bubble fake blood behind the handle. Squeezing on the bubble blood, cut across Tina's arm. Looks like it's creating a wound with the fake blood. A little bit of misdirection, and then it's in the arm. It's a very simple gag set up by Tom Savini, the creature creator on the original Dawn of the Dead movie. The blade's not real, and Tina's doing great. Let's hear for Tina, ladies and Thank gentlemen! You, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Tina. So I'll send you back in the wild. Uh, now, Universal has uh, an amazing history. Well, we're getting ready to celebrate 100 years, yes? Yeah, yeah. Next year is 100 years of, of horror with Universal Studios. This goes all the way back to the 1920s with make a pioneer, Lon Chaney. Lon Chaney, the man of a thousand faces. He worked for Universal Studios in the 1920s, and he brought the lives of classic monsters such as Phantom of the Opera in 1921 and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, just named two of his many. Long was not only a groundbreaking makeup artist, but he was also an amazing actor. He would suffer on set to bring realism to his characters. While filming Hunchback, he actually wore a 15-pound rubber hump and a harness that contorted his body in a way that he couldn't physically stand up right. Long was very secretive, a lot like a magician. He didn't like to talk about his techniques. Unfortunately, he passed away, taking no secrets with him. So to this day, we don't exactly know how some of those monsters were brought to life. But this ushered in the horror craze of the 1930s of my hero, Jack Pierce. Jack Pierce designed all of your favorites, all of the classic universal monsters, which of course include the Wolfman, the Mummy, the Bride of Frankenstein, Lady Gaga, and Post Malone. <laughs> 
Jack would go to morgues. He'd practice on cadavers. It's creepy, but it's true. There's Universal Studios trying to get rid of Cats the Musical. <laughs> Jack working on Boris Karloff. Frankenstein's monster took four hours every day. Layers of makeup and two Hershey's kisses. There they are. No. No. Karloff was also the mummy in 1932. The mummy took twice as long, eight hours. Head to toe in makeup, gauze, bandages, and mud all for just 10 minutes of screen time. I love these monsters. We had some great ones, had some crappy ones. Here's some crappy ones. <laughs> The metal of the mutant from the cylinder. It's actually Pokemon Go going horribly wrong. <laughs> so, everything changed in 1968. John Chambers created foam latex. He used that for the original plan of the Apes, so we were riding a dog. behind my curtain. What are you talking about? The alarm went off. Why are you yelling? I'm not yelling. I'm just very disappointed. Why? Because I asked you not to look behind the curtain. I know, I remember that. And then you look behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. No? No. The alarm went off. Something happened. To my curtain? Yes. What are you talking about? I don't want to talk about it right now. I want to talk about it. There's people here. I don't care. I want to talk about it. What happened to my curtain? Okay. Okay. What? Did you see that kid in the second row? That kid was dirty? Yeah. Yeah? He got bored while, while you were talking. Yeah? And had a rock and they were going to throw it. What? And I was like, no, stop, please don't. And that kid was like, shut up, you tall freak. I do what I want. Bra, bra, bra. Threw the rock, one of these. <clears throat> what is one of them? One of them? The kid's seeing the music video. So, uh, is he checking his deodorant? Maybe. Okay. Dude, did you throw a rock on my curtain? No? Kid said no? What's wrong? No, sorry. What's wrong? Yeah, sorry. I get, really, I get really emotional when children lie. <laughs> What's your name? What is it? Sebastian? Hi, Sebastian. And where are you from? Columbia. Hey! Gee, everyone said Columbia. Was it a bus? <laughs> All right, Sebastian from Columbia, and you're, let me think, you're nine years old. You're 10, whatever, there's an exchange rate. <laughs> All right, Sebastian, are you having fun today? You having fun, good time? Good. That ends now. No, you seem like a nice kid. I'm going to let this go, but Sebastian, I'm watching you. Okay, Sebastian, I'm watching you. Sebastian, don't laugh. This isn't Disney. I don't have to be nice to kids here. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just hate kids. Okay. Can we please, can we move on past this HR nightmare? I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, you were talking about uh, Planet of the Apes and Playtex. Latex. What? Latex. You what? said Playtex. That's different. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to explain to Sebastian the difference? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right, a couple of years ago, Tom Cruise is in a mummy. This movie had a lot of classic makeup effects, including foam latex. On the screen, you're looking at some of our production boards in the film. We'll start with a conceptual drawing. And sometimes we'll even paint over an existing photo of the actor. This is, this is Sophia Boutella. She played the mummy. And in front of this, we create three-dimensional skulls. These sculpts right here, these are used as a reference for foam latex appliances. And as you can see, they're glued directly to the actor's face. Sophia also had little Egyptian runes, little runic letters and symbols. These are applied by using tweezers. The process took about four to four and a half hours every day. That's just from the neck up. From the neck down, large silicone appliances were created with ink-infused glue embedded in them. This was for all the letters and symbols which covered her entire body. And they looked really good. They looked so good that everybody fell down. It took six makeup effects artists working this fast every day. They drink all the Red Bull. Wardrobe was an additional hour. Sophia and her stunt double Lucy Cork, Lucy's right there, they endured this process dozens of times during filming, but their hard work had definitely paid off on the big screen. I love this scene. Wee, I want a hug. 
<laughs> so, this movie was an homage to the classic Universal Monsters and the Monster Makers. People like Jack Pierce and Lon Chaney, they're classics, but one of my heroes, a uh, big influence on me was Rick Baker. Well, now, he's incredible. Yeah. He won uh, seven Oscars. Seven yes. Oscars, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, nominated 11 times, won seven times. More than any other makeup artist in history at this point. Great movies too. Harry Henderson's Men in Black. Mm, the Great Schneider Professor. Yes, yeah. great movies. His first Academy Award win though, a classic. This movie. Do you know what? Yell it out. E.T. E.T. Yep, E.T. There he is. <laughs> he's back and he's constipated. <laughs> Reese's Pieces will do to that to you, kids. So be careful. No, American Werewolf in London. Came out in 1981, won the very first Academy Award in 1982 for Best Makeup in Film. There was no makeup category until 1982 in the Oscars. Okay, now amazing things were happening during that scene. Yes. The actor's face was actually changing shape. Yes. Uh, how did Rick Baker do that with just the, the foam latex? Well, it's not technically just foam latex. It's a combination of what we call practical makeup techniques. Practical makeup is uh, anything that has a physicality to it, uh, hands-on makeup. So the first part of that scene is David and the actor under, underneath appliance makeup. But then the next two sequences were these mechanical heads that change shape. These are two of the nine that were designed by Rick 40 years ago. The understructure is based on David's face. Sections were cut out and fitted with pistons, and these are running on pneumatics. Okay, pneumatics being air pressure. Simple yeah. air pressure, right? Now this is underneath all this. This is traditional foam latex. What made this gag work was the detail. Beautiful work. Airbrushed makeup, porcelain dentures. Under the cheeks, there's bladders, which ripple when they inflate and deflate. Uh, and then they finish this off with real human hair. I'm sorry, did you say real human hair? Yes. Where do you get this? From kids from Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> now, is, uh, is this technology still being used today? Absolutely. Practical makeup is still a big part of bringing the monsters to life. We will enhance it, though, with something like computer graphics or CGI. Uh, Computer-generated imagery, yeah? Yeah, I have a clip. Perfect. All right, so this is mechanical effects. And mechanical effects can be limiting due to budget or time, but we also work with computers. These are animatics for the mummy. Animatics are simply digital placeholders. These are created in pre-production. Gives a feeling for the movement and placement that the creature will eventually bring when it's finished. There were two separate makeup teams on this movie, digital and practical. The digital team. They captured Sophia's entire body and facial features. That way they could morph, shift, and change her body, her face, and her movement all in real time. And then she played Twister <laughs> and did a commercial for Proactive Acne Solution. These are concept drawings. These are used often. There are teams working separately, so they do need something to refer back to to get the effect in the system. So, practical makeup, old school hands on makeup, but combined with digital technology. Great script, great acting, great direction, all that together, and your nightmares, they really do come true. Let's hear it for Mike James, ladies and gentlemen! Thanks, George. Thank you. Uh, I need to only about two minutes, two minutes left. Can we see who's behind the curtain now? Will you help me? Yes, of course. Okay, this will work. I need your help, though. All you gotta do is put on this high voltage vest. What? Just put on this low voltage vest. No, you just said high voltage vest. Just put on this no voltage vest. You keep changing what just you're saying. Just put on the vest. I'm not telling you, let's have your fine. Find Come somebody on. else. Tina! And the crowd goes wild for Tina again. I don't understand your need for attention, Tina. <laughs> Listen, probably it's not twice. We're going to give you and your boyfriend a three-day cruise. Hmm. Brochure. <laughs> to Columbia. <laughs> Can you put that on our right hand, please? Yes. You still live in Columbia, Tina? Where do you live now? Oh, okay. I was gonna say you're you're you have you talk with barely an accent, not like zero accent. It's great. All right. Let's see, yeah, see how you look. Oh, you look like a Power Ranger right now. Can I get a drum roll, some applause? Here we go. Here's Eddie. Excuse me. What's up? You said that was for a kid show. Uh, well, movie, actually. He's for the sequel to Dora the Explorer. <laughs> Dora Learns to Run. <laughs> Mui Rapido. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, wow. No bueno. It's so that dark. <laughs> Wait till you see the movie. All right, you're wearing a telemetry vest, okay? There's sensors on the vest, the glove, and the helmet, so when you move, he moves. Cool? When I turn on the electricity, it turns on the suit, it goes through the boot-up process like a computer. During that time, you might feel some tingling. 
a couple seconds of it might be like, <laughs> you won't remember that. <laughs> but when you wake up, your pants might be wet. Okay, let's get a photo. Yeah, right over here. Okay, big smiles, everyone. Three, two, one, insurance. Oh. All right, Jim, stand right there. Keep your hands to your sides. Please don't move. We're going to go ahead and turn on the power. Once he syncs up to your position, we'll start with the demonstration, okay? So now. Mark, is that supposed to happen with the lights? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is telemetry. Oh. This is used a lot in the 90s for movies like Jurassic Park where you control something from on camera. We also use it to keep Gary Busey alive. <laughs> He's articulating the other one. See that? Baby shark. Do, 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 do. Baby shark. Do, 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 do. You like baby shark? You don't know what that is? Oh. You're missing out. Hi, kids. Hi, Sebastian. I'm Eddie. I live under your bed. But no. Put your hand over your stomach. Take a bow. Excellent. Come back up. Put your hand on your side. Perfect. Go ahead and turn it off here. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Tina. Yeah, that's it for you guys. Thank you, Tina. Mark, great stuff as always. Tina, for coming up here twice, we do have a souvenir for you. There's a picture of you at a crazy man. Try to stay away from. Let's hear for Tina one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Tina. Thank you very much. And of course, let's keep that going for Eddie. Over here. <laughs>